Okay, so let's talk about tetracycline. Um, first of all, what are the different types of tetracycline? Um, there is doxycycline, demiclocycline, minocycline, okay, and obviously tetracycline. What's the mechanism of action of tetracycline? Uh, this is one of those drugs which uh, inhibits the 30S ribosomal subunit. Okay, and how does it inhibit? It will not allow the amino acyl tRNA from sitting from its 30S ribosomal subunit position. Okay, so it will prevent attachment of amino acyl tRNA. So it will prevent attachment of okay and some of the things we should be know knowing um, when we're talking about tetracycline is that it is we should not be taking it with milk or antacid Okay, because it will bind to the tetracycline and we're going to absorb it less because of divalent. Uh, it should not be taken with divalent ca cations. Okay, um, anything else for mechanism of action? Um, I think I also missed that it's iron containing compounds and antacids. Iron containing compounds and antacid. Okay. All right, let's move on to the clinical use. Um, just a quick question. What other drug in the in the microbe section? does the same thing it will not allow divalent absorption divalent cation will um, will interfere with absorption it's actually fluoroquinolone okay um, okay so let's talk about the clinical use I'm sure you know the mnemonic for this one it's vacuum the bedroom so V is for Vibrio A is for acne this one acne Minocycline is used here. Okay. Um, C is for chlamydia. C is for chlamydia. U is for ure ureoplasma and urolyticum. M is for mycoplasma. Okay. Vacuum the. T is for tularemia. TH is for H. pylori. H. pylori and bedroom B is for uh, Borrelia burgdorferi, also Bartonella. So there is two Bs here, and R is for rickettsia. Okay, R is for rickettsia. Okay, so let's quickly read one more time. V is for Vibrio cholera, A is for acne, C is for chlamydia, Uriplasma urealyticum. Mycoplasma, tularemia, H. pylori, uh, Bergdorferi, Bartonella, and Rickettsia. What are some of the drugs used for uh, H. pylori other than tetracycline? We can use Metro. We can use Amoxicillin. We can use um, Proton Pump Inhibitor. Sorry about that. Okay. We see these often. Okay, so let's talk about the toxicities. 
Okay. There is quite a few toxicities for tetracycline. There is also a nice mnemonic. Well, it's actually my mnemonic, so I don't know how other people do it. The way I do it is GBTPP. Okay. GBTPP. There is quite a rhyme to it, right? G is for GI distress. Okay. B is for bone bone growth problem in children T is for teeth discoloration P is for 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 sensitivity and the last P is for pregnancy Okay, that's about it. Um, the last thing I wanted to talk about was the different types of tetracycline, um, which is right here. Um, one thing we have to know that doxycycline is hepatically excreted. Okay? Sorry, fecally excreted. Fecally, fecally eliminated. As a result, it can be used in patients with renal failure. Okay. So, can be used with renal failure. Simple, right? The next thing is demiclocycline. Demiclocycline can also act as an ADH antagonist. What does that mean? Uh, when there is too much ADH, uh, demiclocycline can be used. Um, for example, it can be used in the disease SIADH, which is syndrome of, of inappropriate ADH. So there's, that's when the urine concentration is going to be so, so, um, so, so low because the urine is not concentrated. Okay, so that's about it. Um, and also, doxycycline is used for Lyme disease. I know they're all used for all these bugs, but this one is specifically used for Lyme disease. So try to remember that too. Right, so that's about it. And please visit my blog for the notes for these uh, tutorials if you think it's helpful. Other than that, um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye for now.